Hey guys, so today I'm doing a movie review on the new movie The Perfect Date and I'm doing a voiceover because I'm just trying something new. So let me dive in. I really like the concept of this movie. This guy who makes an app for girls that need dates. We did see like him on a couple of dates and we also did see him interact with his dates. However, I feel that we didn't get to see more of the dates that he was going on, which is basically what the whole movie was about. I felt like it was just something that was quick and overlooked. We got a montage of what he wore and then 0 0.2 seconds of what the date was. I would have liked to see more of these dates and him on these dates. I felt like they focused too much on the storyline. I think that was just a really missed opportunity. This was a really good concept, but they were just too focused on the storyline. Another thing, I really appreciate Laura Moreno's character, how she was really like, she doesn't need no man. She's really for herself. For example, Noah Centeno and Laura Moreno's character, they get into an argument and she ends up going to the formal by herself. Noah Centineo's character goes to the formal with the popular girl. At the formal, the popular girl finds out what Noah Centineo's character does on the side and she says that he's like a liar and so she ditches him. So then Noah Centineo's character goes up to Laura Moreno's character and he's just like, can I have this dance? And she's just like, no, I'm not going to be your second choice. And I appreciated that because I'm like, whoa, I thought they were going to get together and they were gonna dance all night and be happy, you know, kiss and make up, but then she denied him. So I thought that was very different. In a way, it was kind of cliche. <laughs> you know, like these rom coms try to not play into that, like, the woman is a weak, docile woman, she's super clumsy, and she needs a man. I think these new rom com movies try to depict women as strong, independent women, and that they don't need a man but they still want to have the same formula of a rom-com because that's the classic narrative structure that gets views and money. But they try to make these girls seem that they're like strong and they do seem strong, but that doesn't work for this kind of narrative structure. That's not how it's supposed to be used. Like the women are supposed to be weak and they're supposed to depend on the man to help fix them. And that's why these rom-com movies don't work because these old narrative structure ideologies clash with the new feminist ideas. But the part that confused me the most was that she was like, yeah, she was in the car like venting to Noah and to Neo's character. And then she's just like, oh, my parents say the reason I stomp around in my boots because they say that like, I don't want to open up to anyone. After she said that, I thought to myself, well, you seem kind of open to me. Like she's pretty open with him, even though she barely met him. And she looked like she had some friends like at the dance. Where What is this opening up that she's not doing? And is this implying that she's only opening up to him? So, like, it kind of defeats the purpose of them trying not to make the woman look weak. But out of all the people, it had to be this one guy that she had to open up to. Am I missing the point here? <laughs> like, wh what is going on? And, I mean, when you get to know a person I, or anyone, really, like, you don't want to, like, just be an open book. I think by now we should all know that we shouldn't just be opening up to anybody. You can't trust everybody. But is that necessarily a problem? No, I don't think so. I think she's justified in the sense that she shouldn't be opening up just to anybody. I don't know, like, what were they trying to do here, you know? Am I missing something here? <laughs> like, let me know in the comments if this is, like, supposed to be a deeper meaning here because I'm probably missing the mark. I don't know. At the end, does she need this guy to open up to or, like, to finally open up the gates for her to, like, open up to everyone? Like, I'm slightly confused. If you know the answer to this, like, what that part meant, please put it down in the comments below because I just, I thought that part was weird because I felt like that's what every rom-com movie tries to show is that the woman at the end is always weak and she needs to lean on somebody that's stronger and someone that they can depend on to help them, guide them to be more open people and come to their senses. And I guess the person that always, the candidate to help these women are men. 
in these rom-coms, you know? Or maybe they were just trying to show a more softer, relatable side to Laura Moreno's character that other people can probably relate to. I, I don't know, guys. Am I, like, looking into this too much? Despite my previous comments, I do find Laura Moreno's character to be very strong, independent, very different from all characters that I've seen in romantic movies before, you know? I find her to be like a nice fresh breath of air because she's very different and she's, instead of being the one with the issues in this movie, the person with the issues was Noah Centennial's character. Usually the male lead is always seems to be cool and collective and mysterious and the tables turned here because she was the one that was kind of mysterious and spontaneous and she was the one that showed up at his door. Usually in rom-com films, the women are always the one apologizing at the end. And in this movie, she didn't apologize to him. He apologized to her for overstepping his boundaries and exposing some information about her when he shouldn't have. I found that to be something very different. People now, for this video, I'm going to be talking about how women don't want to see themselves being represented in media as weak and docile. So I feel the screenwriters are trying to depict these strong women. And I get it. They want to, they want to show how independent independent and strong these women are. However, there are some things that I find to be unnecessary. For example, Laura Marina's character. Some things that she was doing was pretty unnecessary. Like when he was opening the car door for her on like one of their first dates, she was just like, uh, thanks, but I can open my own door. That is so unnecessary. I get it like you're an independent woman and you don't need a man, but if a guy's gonna open up a door for you, that's just him being a gentleman. <laughs> I don't know, is that too extra or do you think that it's demeaning for a man to open and close your door or... It's symbolic that you're not an independent woman because you're not doing things for yourself. That men have to do things for you. I don't know, is that what it is? Because if so, I don't think that's what it is. It's just people are just trying to be nice, trying to be gentlemen. They're just showing good manners. I don't think that men should be discouraged from opening doors for women or their dates in general. I just think that that's a respectful gesture. And honestly, there's more important things to worry about you know who cares if a guy opens your door for you maybe that's just me how do you guys feel about those typical nice gestures of guys opening up your door do you think it's a demeaning or offensive i don't know i i don't see like anything demeaning about that or like offensive about that <laughs> in the movie i really like how he has like a good work ethic Noah centennial's character he has this app where he goes on dates and he gets money working really hard to go to yale and then he still works at a sub shop i think that's a really good thing to show is that he's really working hard to get to where he wants to be but at the end it's like what was the point of him working so hard he just wasted i mean he didn't really waste his time if he was making money but like he was really working hard to go to Yale at the end he says he's not going to Yale because he says if he has to change the way he is then he probably shouldn't be going there and for me that's just not, not a good enough reason for you not to go to Yale anymore you're working so hard and you're trying to go to the school like what are you trying to tell the generation of today oh if you feel like you're gonna change as a person in order to adapt to your surroundings then you shouldn't challenge yourself and go to new surroundings or prestigious places because you might change. Even though realistically many people have done have faked a persona or something to land a job or impress an employer. For example, there's many actors that act like they know how to speak a language or have a certain skill for a role, but they don't and they end up getting the part, but they learn. I don't know. I don't like that message. I like the message of him working really hard to get to where he wants to go, but I don't like the message of if you're going to change as a person, you shouldn't try to be something you're not. Yeah, I get that. But to not go and to not excel? <laughs> like, I don't know. I, does that make sense? Like, that doesn't justify his reason to not go to Yale. And I get it. Yeah, he does have this other full ride to this other school, but wasn't the whole point of the movie for him to go to Yale? I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I know that there's people that can't even afford to go to college let alone college isn't even an option for most people because they can't afford it or just because of life and he has a choice to go to Yale or get a full ride to this local college which, which is still a 
good. Like, I would love that. But he has a chance to go to Yale. There's most people that don't have a chance to go to college. That's very unrealistic to me, and that's not a reason for him not to go to Yale. I don't think there will ever be any rhyme or reason that will ever justify not to go to Yale if you have the means to go. One more thing. I love that the cast is diverse. Love seeing my girl Camila Mendes, a Latina, in this film. Camila Mendes is such a good actress. I love her in Riverdale. Camila Mendes and Emma Roberts, they have they have similar acting roles where they have to play the rich, ratty girl. I just like how they talk fast and that they're very articulate. Their word jargon can be a little bizarre sometimes, but I love it. I really do appreciate the diversity, but I do have to say that it was still lacking. It was really lacking in, in diversity. I didn't see a dark-skinned person in this movie. The people of color that were in this movie, they were in the side roles. Like, yes, they might have had more lines than the other actors that were of color in this film, but why did the people of color always have to be in the background or have the side roles of, like, being the best friend or being the mean girl or something like that? Like, I want a little bit more representation here. These rom-com movies now, they try not to follow the typical rom-com formula, but they do because the woman might not have the gay best friend, but Noah Centennial, even though he's a man, he still has a gay best friend. This might be out of line, but I feel like movies today, that if they include a person of color in their films, they're like, we can't just have them be a person of color like they have to represent another marginalized community and i feel like they just have this one person that represents multiple marginalized communities so that they seem diverse like this isn't the only movie that does that there's multiple movies and shows that do this is that out of line to say why do these people of color have to play the most stereotypical roles i just don't feel like these roles fit these actors well for example on riverdale camila mendez is character has personality. She's very forward thinking. She is very head on about things. Very confident and I felt like in this movie this girl yeah she was confident but it's just she's supposed to be vapid and bratty. I didn't like that because I'm just like really? Camila to me is like an A-list actress and her playing a role like this at her caliber we could have at least gotten more lines, a more three-dimensional character, I don't know, I just did not like her character in this film. It was just a very plain Jane. The only people of color that you do have in this movie have to play stereotypical roles. Why can't we have better movies with better representation? I would like to see something different. That's all I got for you. Hopefully this made sense. I hope you guys liked this movie review. I hope it didn't sound too negative. I kind of like this movie, but overall it's not my favorite i think noah centineo has to really look at these scripts before he accepts the role because i feel like lately he doesn't really read the script or maybe he thinks he can make the script better honestly these like the sierra burgess movie oh my that was a terrible movie mm -mm. i think he should challenge himself and do a movie like cruel intentions and if you don't know what cruel intentions is you need to get on it because that movie is so good. Come on, Noah. Like, from all the boys I loved before to these movies, like, what what is he doing? Like, mm -mm. I hope that you guys still go watch the movie. And comment below if you have your own thoughts about this movie. Please try not to kill me. I hope that none of my comments offended anyone. The goal wasn't to offend anyone. And if you guys like these videos, give me a thumbs up because honestly, I don't even know what direction I'm going with these like videos. Alright, bye.